Connection established. Welcome. Today you'll see making of directional antenna, so-called Wi-Fi antenna, for short and long-range communication. With this antenna you should be able to extend the range of your wireless network, maybe make bridges with other antennas or long-range antennas, and search for 2.4 and 5 GHz signals close to you. I was aiming at 2.4 GHz band, but given that later I got USB Wi-Fi dual band adapter, it will be a dual band antenna, but constructed for 2442 MHz frequency. With the help of waveguide calculator for measures, making of this antenna was easy. Before we begin, let me just fast explain why this antenna should work better for long-range communication than a regular omnidirectional antenna that is part of almost every smartphone, laptop, home router and a similar device. Directional antennas are constructed in a way that they direct signal at some degrees to desired location and by doing that signal that is directed is stronger and it is capable of traveling longer distances than signal from omnidirectional antennas. If you can imagine it, in 3D signal of directional antenna would look similar to Zeppelin. Of course it depends on angle. Red color is representing stronger signal. On the other side, omnidirectional antennas are covering 360 degrees and that's why they are better suitable for devices that are not statical that are moving, but everything has its advantages and disadvantages, so signal from omnidirectional antenna is getting weaker and weaker very fast when moving away from center of antenna. In 3D omnidirectional signal would look like a donut with antenna in center of it. In our case we will direct signal with the help of aluminium can. I started by measuring cans that I found at home. I was taking measures of diameter and length of each can and comparing it with table that you can see here. I will put link of that table and all other sites I will use in this video in the description below. I took three cans with 80 mm diameter and on two of them removed all closed ends and connected them together. By doing that I got one can with a length of 260 millimeters. Then, with the help of this nice website, I entered diameter size in and got computed measures for antenna construction. In the end, we should get waveguide wavelength of 281 millimeter probe length that is 2 millimeters wide copper wire soldered to N-type RF connector will be 30 millimeters long. Probe will be placed 70 mm from closed side of can and 140 mm from open side of can. Can size needs to be 210 mm and antenna should work in frequencies between 2.196 and 2.869 GHz. Now that we got that done, let me show you things I'll use for constructing this antenna. Here of course you can see three aluminium cans each 80 mm in diameter and 90 mm long. You can find food or drink cans in every local store. Just look for the right sizes. Then you will need around 2 mm thick copper wire that will be soldered to N-type RF connector and used as a probe. For next components I'll add links in description below, so check it out. Here is female N-type RF connector that cost 2 bucks. Next, N-type male to RPSMA female cable. Its price is around $3. 3 meters of male to female RPSMA extension cable for easier maneuvering of antenna that I bought for a dollar and a half. And last, USB Wi-Fi dual band adapter that cost around $11 on eBay and some tools you'll see in action very soon. Now finally, let's start making antenna. First, let's solder 
copper wire to N-type RF connector. Please be careful when using soldering iron and sharp tools like scalpel and drill. Second, I was using black duct tape to connect cans together. Then I marked point with a black marker where probe will be placed and two extra points for tightening the probe. You can see it is 70 mm from closed end of can. Then mark place where to cut the axis of can. This should be at 210 mm. For cutting axis of can, I used scalpel. Now, with a small drill, I made a hole for probe and two extra holes for screws that will hold probe in a place. After that, I just wanted to check how it's gonna fit and saw that probe is placed well, but screws were too long, so I found shorter ones. For end, I stylized cantana a little bit with a duct tape all around to make it look nice and to be sure that the cans will be well connected together. Now let's connect everything and let's start testing. Connect end type male side of cable to antenna. Then add RP SMA extension cable and on the end of it connect USB adapter. That's it. Now let me show you the results of testing. First, I was comparing performance of this directional antenna versus omnidirectional antenna. Here are the results from three different situations. I'll explain what each color represents. Blue is distance in meters, orange represents pink in milliseconds, download in megabits per second is gray, upload in megabits per second is yellow. Horizontal text is describing obstacles and vertical text is showing with which antenna was this measured. Take note that in each case I repeated measuring a few times and here are shown mean results. In the first case, distance between antenna and access point was 10 meters. Between antenna and access point was 15 centimeters of concrete wall with a few windows. You can see that pink and upload results on both antennas were similar my download speed was almost twice better using antenna. In the second case, distance between antenna and access point was 6 meters. Between antenna and access point was 60 centimeters of concrete wall. Pink and upload results on both antennas are again similar. My download speed was much better using antenna. In third case, where distance is 3 meters, all results are pretty much the same. Second, I also made a few measures to check how good is closed end of antenna blocking signal. I pointed closed end towards access point from distance of 10 meters and here are mean results. Pink and upload results were same as results when antenna was pointed with open side towards access point. Download was one third of maximum, so that was better result than I expected. Third. I was looking for farthest SSID from omnidirectional antenna. By rotating antenna 360 degrees, I found over 30 SSIDs around me, and the farthest SSID that I know from access point using omnidirectional antenna was around 260 meters away. And for the fourth test, unless I don't make or find another directional 2.4 GHz antenna, I'm not able to test connections above kilometer and more. I can see one local SSID of 2.4 GHz directional antenna from one organization in my town that is slightly over 4 kilometers away from me, in almost clear line of sight. But to access it, I should be a member of that organization, and until that happens, I'm unable to connect. Anyway. I strongly believe that I should be able to make that connection with this antenna. Important question is, how good connection would that be? Until I figure out something about that, 
uh, play with different projects. Expect results of this last. We can say unfinished container test in future on this channel. And that's it. I hope you learned something new and found useful information in this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe. Good luck.